we have set it up. It all looks pretty good and ready to go, but I'm only getting one record. So if just like you thought, probably we're going to pass this in a for loop and just do it based on the number that we want. That's pretty easy to go in and set up and do. So um, I want to set this up in here. I can use that faker multiple times for that instance. So, um, but if I wanted to call it each time differently, I could put that inside the for loop. So, um, which might be a good idea because maybe I do get different results. So I'm going to just pass in a for loop and I equals zero. I'm going to say that this is equal to one now. And I'm doing that uh, to be able to basically specify the ID number. You may have noticed in here where it says six. Well, that's actually the first record, but the first record starts at one normally. Well, that's because I've actually run this six times. Well, when I clear this, it doesn't actually restart those numbers. So to basically force that to work, I can set I to one and then come down here where it says the person and say the person ID, which is the ID of that record, is equal to the value of I at that given time. So that's a little quick, easy way to go in and reference one, two, three, four, five, all the way up. So now I can grab this close bracket down here, bring it over here, tab everything in so it's nice and neat. And I will delete the values here. And I can bring that in, tighten it up, that's all right. Now, how many of these do I want? Well, it's gonna start at one, so if I put 50, it's gonna do you know 49 of them. So think about that as you as you create it, um, in case you're like, oh, I gotta have exactly 50, you know? Um, and then uh, I'm gonna say, you know what, just, I'm gonna do this twice. First, I'm gonna set it up as a smaller number so you can see what's going on. So let's say something like 100. So it's gonna loop through this 100 times, and I'm gonna clean that up, just one more space there. Uh, it's gonna run this 100 times, it's gonna create 100 different people, and it should count all the way to 100 here, or 99. So here we go, our db colon seed. And it is seeded, and see how fast that was? That was 100 people. Click refresh, and there's 100 people now in the system. And look at this, these names, they look like they're real people, right? And different the titles, right? What was that one, battery something like that? Battery, battery repair, uh, astronomer, astronomer, uh, visual designer, there we go. Uh, product promoter, this one's just city, I don't know what that, assembler. So very cool, bunch of different names. You can see quite random, quite different here. The names here, the businesses also look pretty legit. Um, uh, phone numbers, email addresses. Uh, now, here's one thing that you might check out too, is you notice that the names don't match up with the email addresses. If that's important to your randomizer, you can just randomly basically create the Hotmail and Gmail by adding on those values. Now, something to note here is that some of these emails, even though they're random, could work. There could be somebody with this name, Miller59 at abshire.com, or probably for sure this one, this Hope Edison at hotmail.com. Somebody probably for sure owns that email address, right? So keep that in mind if you're going to send out random emails, like with an email server or something like that, that these people could exist and they could get that email. So just keep that in mind when you go to create things. Sometimes it's better to uh, just put in uh, a fake one, like gmail2.com or something, so that you know that, hey, look, they're all good. Um, now, that was 100, but I can come back up to this, and I'm going to say 10,000 users, all right? And I want you to look at the speed for this one now. So we'll say rdb colon seed, and it's seeding. Notice it's not done yet because it hasn't set the value. It's seeding, it's seeding. And sometimes I like to do is come over here and click refresh, and it actually shows me the records as they get created. So I'm at 783, 932, 999. I'm at 1,090 now. So now I'm on to the second page. And look at all these users here, right? Tons of users in the system now. There's a thousand users. And I can go in SQL Pro and of course change this number if I needed to see more rows than what's given. If I refresh this again, I'm now at almost into the 2000 mark. So I might need to say, I think I set this for, uh, I set this for 10,000, but say you needed 100,000 records, you can set that and kind of just walk away. Or another way to do it is, uh, just run multiple seeders. So you can run the seeder and then run another seeder, maybe for a little bit different data that you want to set up, maybe in a different role. So that's the base on how to get started with seeders and fakers. Now there's a lot more 
patterns that you could use and, and randomizing things that you could do with your system. But that's really up to you on how you want to set that up. And then I've showed you the basics now. So you shouldn't have any problem with having data to work with in your system. So in the next episode, I'm going to just show you uh, just to kind of show you what's going on inside of a view template uh, and loop through all those values just to kind of get it and show you how it all kind of comes together. All right.